Hello everybody, this is Patrick Califia. I'm coming to you from the Rose City, Portland, Oregon. I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. Um, I really want to thank the folks at the Publishing Triangle for giving me this great honor, the, the Bill Whitehead Award for Lifetime Achievement. I am still on cloud nine it isn't anything I expected, and so my my heart really goes out to you in gratitude and astonishment. I want to thank David Groff and all of the staff and the volunteers who made this event possible, and also thank Joe Minetti for dressing up as his handsome self and doing an introduction. That was above and beyond the call of friendship. Um, I was told that I could take a few minutes to talk about activism and creativity in a queer context. So I, I hope I can wrap that up in the stated limit of five minutes. Um, I believe that creating queer culture is a form of activism. Um, it is a way of reaching out to our kin and letting them know that we're here and hopefully gathering people in so that ideas and aesthetics and agendas can cross fertilize and create something that is really dynamic and alive. Queer culture, when we do it right, also becomes a way to notify the larger society that we're here. And that is super important. I mean, I came out in 1971, and it was a real catch-22 to try to find any information, much less an actual location where gay people would be located. And uh, you only could locate gay if you already knew gay existed and often what it meant was looking in the margins of the cultural discourse for a big smudge where they had tried to erase us. I never want us to be that invisible again. And if my life work has been for any purpose, it has been for the purpose of forming community, gaining territory, defending that territory, and loving ourselves enough to not back down when the majority tries to scare us into going back into the closet. There are a lot of different closets in this country. And uh, right now, the minority group that is under the heaviest attack is trans people. More than 400 pieces of legislation that are pending or actually already passed to make it harder for young people to transition, and even adults. There are attempts to prevent us from accessing medical treatment or dressing as our true selves. In Florida, a law has been proposed that would make it a capital crime to be transsexual in front of minors. And this would be ridiculous if it weren't so terrifying because there are many trans people who are parents. And so the pro-family movement is once again trying to break up families and separate those of us who are different from the people we love and the people who love us. Um, you know, I, I don't really think that equality is enough if we're looking at forming an, an agenda for activism. We are a unique people. We have our own traditions, our own needs, histories, mores, sexuality, problems, and we can't afford to give any of that up for the sake of assimilation. Assimilation may make it easier to live in a nice house in a suburban neighborhood, but it doesn't help working class queers, and it does not mean that America has learned to tolerate difference. And until that sea change takes place, none of the civil rights that we win will be worth the paper that they're printed on. Um, we need to be able to be out, 
and also be safe to make a living and to be able to walk down to the corner store or to a laundromat without being threatened with violence or ridicule. I'm not sure really which one is worse. And in order to have a kind of equality that is not assimilation, we need everybody. Each little minority group is too small to do street action or lobbying on its own and be effective. And that means we need to study all forms of oppression in this culture. There are tons of brilliant people who are doing work on disability rights, defending sex workers, um, helping prisoners, fighting racism, and, and we need to be able to be allies to one another and learn, if we don't know already, how to form coalitions. Now, this is not easy. Uh, we don't always get greeted with a great big thank you and a kiss on the cheek. Learning how to be a good ally often means being uncomfortable, educating yourself, being willing to relinquish your privilege, and enhancing your own empathy so that you are able to intuit why it is that groups of people who are not just like you are being harmed and why that is not morally acceptable. Um, I think it's very important for mainstream lesbians and gay men to remember that homosexuality is in fact a form of gender variance and that the only reason you all get outed is because you don't conform to the gender binary. So you can put that in your cocktail olive and smoke it, because that's just the truth. If you are uncomfortable supporting trans people now that we are under attack, you have to realize that part of why we make you uncomfortable is because there is something about us that you cannot accept within yourself. We are connected. And if you don't want a moral panic that will sweep Republicans into power and hand public policy in this country over to them, this is where we gotta fight. This is where we have to make our stand. Um, I just wanna say that we've always been terrorized of the next generation and the the prospect of young people being corrupted has always been used by our enemies to try to frighten us away from the folks who will come after us. And it's part of why we lose our history with every generation and part of why we wind up reinventing the wheel in many ways. When young writers come to me and say, I need advice on how to get published, I don't know what to tell them. I mean, America has always been very hostile to any kind of public funding for the arts and the gay bookstores, publishing companies, women's bookstores, magazines, all of that has been replaced by an internet that in fact is not really very friendly to queer people. We do manage to use it, the margins of it, but we need to pay more attention to other ways of encountering and communicating with each other. And we need to think about how to mentor and financially guarantee that artists can do really good work. Because no matter what the internet may tell you, you cannot create high quality content for free. That just does not happen. Being an artist is a job. It is work, it is a career, and it is a vocation. Now. Now, when we talk about activism, people like to say, oh, our enemies are on the wrong side of history. And I, I do believe that, but I also believe that we can't always win. What we can do is create a record of our resistance. We can make it very clear that we did not willingly knuckle under when there were people who screamed at us, shot us, refuse to give us jobs or housing and, and the whole rest of that shameful slate of oppression. Okay, and that is, in, often that is all we can do and it, so it has to be enough. I believe we can go further, but it will take 
huge amounts of effort and cooperation. Finally, I just want to say that we should all be deviant, we should all be defiant, and we should never give up. And this may sound odd coming from me, but I really believe that it is better to live on your feet than it is to live on your knees or with somebody else's boot on the back of your neck. That's assuming it's a non-consensual boot. Um, thank you for this time to air my opinions. Thank you again for this award. And I just want to send my love out to each and every one of you. We are beautiful. We are valuable. We are important. Once again, never give up.